think one of the problems for the elected officials don't really relate to. You know, they don't. They don't. They don't feel they're addressing their needs. They don't speak their language literally, in, in the sense that the agents don't have anybody on city council, let's say, or an assembly. Um, so that's one problem, and it's a pretty big one. Uh, it was in 1970 with the Voting Rights Act that the boroughs of Manhattan, Brooklyn, and the Bronx be were covered by the Voting Rights Act as protected populations because there was a question of whether or not there was a systematic blocking from participation of blacks and Latinos. And I think we've seen over and over again um, that indeed that was the case. It, then we had to go back to court in 75 to get bilingual provisions added so that there would be electoral materials in Spanish. Uh, over and over again, at each step, you have a popular movement that pushes back the boundary for participation, but the system has always tries to limit it. Now, that, that affects everyone, but there are some particular groups that are affected more. Uh, we don't have a bilingual ballot. Until recently, there weren't really any interpreters at the, at the voting booth. Uh, and when you do go, incidentally, and I've done poll watching, the people who are there from the clubs, that old culture, and they aren't Chinese, <laughs> believe me, but even if they were, uh, the people who are there, they have their own little culture, and it's like, what are you doing here? They look down at the buff cards for those few people who are voting, and they say, oh, I can't find your name, and they send people oftentimes away unless you have a poll watcher there. So that, that's something that, that bothers me and a lot of other people. Is that people don't feel like they're welcomed in the system. It's not that people are indifferent or apathetic, but people are struggling to change their life conditions. What they've done is make a judgment that voting is not going to affect them. When they feel that voting can affect it, then they vote. And I think we've seen that in the presidential campaigns. I think we saw it in the last mayoral campaign and the number of local elections. Um, the percentage of people that had, percent uh, that had um, participated in primaries had been negligible. Now in our communities, especially within the central Brooklyn community and areas like Queens and also in the, in the Bronx, people are coming out in greater numbers. We don't get anything because people say, let, let them have it. It doesn't happen that way. You have to demonstrate your ability to organize your own community, and then when you're organizing, you have to organize your organization. You have to be able to do it. Around that time, um, the former mayor, Mayor Koch, wanted to build a jail. He wanted to put it in Soho. He wanted to put it in Little Italy. All those communities said, no, 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 you know, and he didn't put it in those communities. He wanted to put it in Chinatown. They had, we had 15,000 Chinese garment workers marching around City Hall, and he put it in Chinatown. And that was a very sobering lesson for our community because we didn't have the votes. We had only a couple hundred registered voters. We did a lot of voter registration since then, and we did a lot of coalition building. Got involved in the Dinkins campaign, for example. We had agents participating with other groups, Latinos and many other people in that campaign. And people have seen that it does make a difference.